Hello and welcome to this episode of Luminar News. My name is Jacob Bors and I'm here to bring you up to speed with the latest Luminar updates. Just before we're going to start, I want to remind you to subscribe to our channel to make sure that you don't miss one of our future episodes or updates. Skylum just released brand new update for Luminar Neo with the number 1.5.0. It mostly focuses on the four new extensions, however it comes with some other updates that are quite exciting. And we will cover all of this in this video. We will start by looking at the list of the updates and then I will show you how to make sure that you have a latest version on your computer. Finally, at the end, we will jump into Luminar Neo and I will show you all the updates and how to use them. So first come first, let's go through the list of the updates. Of course, that we have to focus on the extensions first. First, you should know that all the, Eften first, you should know that all the extensions are now available in Luminar Neo for the Pro Plan monthly and yearly subscribers, as well as the owners of the 2022 extension pack. Now starting with the extension number one, it's the focus stacking. The focus stacking extension combines many images taken at the different focal length to deliver a crisp result with a greater depth of field than in any of the individual source images. It allows you to stack up to 100 source images and they'll automatically be aligned and cropped based on the reference photo. Lens and chromatic aberration corrections can also be applied to a row of photos. The second extension is the exciting Upscale AI. It enhances image resolution in a natural way. Before upscaling, the tool exports the image to save all edits made to the original file and it works both with RAW and non-RAW files. It can upscale them up to 6 times, giving the best result at 2 times and 4 times enhancement. The extension number 3 is the Background Removal AI. It automatically removes the background behind the subjects in the photo. You can also select multiple subjects that you want to leave and remove the rest. It comes with a refinement brush that will allow you to fix any imperfections in the mask. And finally, the exciting extension number 4, the Super Sharp AI. This extension helps you to transform a photo with a moving subject from blurry to sharp. The neural network calculates a photo's depth, perspective and contact. With this information, it can deblur and correct the focus with compression algorithm. It easily eliminates the motion blur. Now, apart of these new extensions, you can also enjoy the updated user interface in the left panel of the catalog module and you can finally use the undo and redo feature for brushing. Last but not least, Skylum also fixed a number of bugs and you can now enjoy Luminar Neo working even more smoothly. To finish it off, if you want to see the full list of updates, you should visit the website of Skylum at skylum.com slash what's new slash Luminar Neo. Now before we go going to continue, I want to quickly tell you that this video is powered by our Luminar Neo Power Bundle. To celebrate this update, this bundle is now available for just $39. With this bundle, you will get over 986 new elements to power up your favorite Luminar Neo tools. You will get extra high definition skies, overlays, textures, backgrounds, sky objects, LUTs and presets. All of this will help you to transform your images with just a few clicks. If you want to find out more about it, you can follow the link in the description of this video or go directly to our website cleverphotographer.com. Now it's time to make sure that you're running the latest version of Luminar Neo. So first, how you find out what version you're using. For that, we're gonna navigate in the top left corner of your screen where you need to click on the Luminar Neo icon. This will open a little list where you want to click on About Luminar Neo. That will open new window and double check what version you're running. The new version is number 1.5.0, so as you can see, I have an old version and I need to update it. So to do that, we're gonna close this window and once again return to our Luminar Neo logo in the top left corner of your screen. 
Here click on it and then click on check for updates. It will check for updates and it will show you the window where it will tell you that the new version of Luminar Neo is available. Luminar Neo 1.5.0 is now available, we have an older version and yes we wanna download it and install it. So now we're just gonna follow the instructions and we're gonna do that by clicking on a install update in the right bottom corner of the window. Now depending on your internet it will take a little bit of time, the update is around 400 megabytes, so let's wait a little bit and I come back to you after. Once the downloading and extracting is over, you will be prompt with the install and relaunch message. Simply click on the button and it will now install and relaunch the application. After the application relaunch, you will be returned back into the catalog module. And before we going to continue, let's just double check that we are on the right version. To do that, once again, let's quickly jump into the Luminar Neo icon in the top left corner of our screen, click on it and then select about Luminar Neo. Here double check the version and once again we are on Luminar Neo update 5 version 1.5.0. Once we happy with it, we just close the window and we can start to use the new update. And now it's time to look at all the updates in Luminar Neo. Now we have a separate video for each of the new extensions coming on our YouTube channel, so we will go quite fast, but I still want to show you where to find the extensions and how to use them. So first come first, when we were going through the list of the updates, I mentioned that we have a new panel on the right side of the screen in a catalog module. So when we look at it, we used to have the extension icon in the top left corner of the screen, but now it's on the top of the panel here. We still have the orange icon, but it also says extensions. Under it, we now have all the new extensions here. We first have the information panel, which correspond with the image that is selected. Then we have the HDR merge, focus stacking and upscale. When we go back, once again, let's click on the extensions and let's remind ourselves that to install the extensions, you need to do that from here. Once you access the extension panel, it's really simple, all you need to do is just to click on the little icon which will say install. It usually takes 5 to 6 seconds to install it and once it's installed, it will prompt you with the message installed. Once you have all the extensions installed, you can close this and start to use them. So the first extension we're gonna be looking at is the focus stacking. The one thing you should know about focus stacking is that it's only available for the standalone version of Luminar Neo. Now to use it, you can use any format of images, anything from JPEG, TIFF file or RAW file. Now let's try to use it. So first of all, we're gonna select this folder here and I will try to make sure that all these sample files are available for you so you can use them and try them. So here I have eight images, they each have a focus on different parts of the image starting from the bottom all the way to the top. So now we're gonna select all of them and you can do that by clicking on the first one and hold shift and click on the last one so that way you select all of them. Drag and drop them on a focus stacking tool and once they appear there you will see the little thumbnails available. You can scroll through them with the use of the arrows and before you're going to use the tool you can also use some of the settings. So click on the little wheel here and when you open it, you have a three options here. The auto alignment, which I suggest you to always have on. You can also pick the reference image. And finally, you can also put on the chromatic aberration reduction. So for us, we're gonna use that. You can also see that at the bottom here, we have the remove all images. And when you click on it, it will remove all the images from the tool. Once you finish, you just click away. And now we are happy to start and click on the stack. Depending on the size of the image and resolution, this process may be take few seconds or few minutes. Once the focus stacking is finished, it will create the image in a new folder called focus stacking. This folder will be saved in the image folder on your computer, however you can still take the image and drag and drop it into any of the folders you have available. So once I open it now, you can see that pretty much the entire image is sharp, starting all the way at the bottom from the leaves to the top of the trees and the house. So this is how you use the focus stacking. After this, we're gonna look at the upscale AI. 
So for this, we're gonna go into our sample files and we're gonna use the picture of the moon here. I have captured this moon in Marrakesh in Morocco and as I only had a 300 mm lens, I had to crop it quite heavily. It's now somewhere around 1300 pixels on 1300 pixels and the size of the image is 355 kilobytes. So I would like it bigger as I wanna use it maybe for a big print or maybe for a large resolution project. So to do that, we are just gonna select the moon, drag and drop it on our upscale AI. Let's just scroll down to make it nice and visible. And here what we have available is the little white cross here. And when you click on it, you can remove the image from your tool. And let's drag it back again. In the top right corner of the tool, we have the little eye icon. And when we click on it, it will give us some additional information. It tells us that the minimum input size is 257 on 257 pixels. The maximum input size is 16,000 pixels on the longest side. And the maximum output size is the 32,000 pixels on the longest side. Once you're happy with this information, we can now choose if we want to make it twice as big, four times or six times as big. Now, as I said on the beginning, the best result comes with the two times and four times. So let's go for the four times select it and then simply click on the upscale button. Just like with the focus stacking, depending on the size and depending on how bigger you're making the image, it can take anything from few seconds to few minutes. Once the upscale is over, it will also create a new folder in our folders. Once again, it will be saved in your image folder on your computer. And again, you can take the image and drag and drop it in any of your folders. Now, when we select the image and go back to our information panel, you can see that the new version has a 5,000 pixels on both of the sides and it is now over one megabyte big. Now, when we zoom in, you can still see all the details and texture on the moon, which is a good news as the image is four times the size of the original image. And now it's time to continue with the third extension and that's the background removal AI. So for this, we're gonna select the image and move it into edit module by clicking on edit on the top of the screen or using E on our keyboard. After this, we need to navigate into our layer properties, click on it, open it, and once again, navigate into the masking. At the bottom of the list, you will see the background removal AI. So simply click on it. And after that, the AI start to scan the image and start to recognize the different elements on it. Once the scanning is over, you will be prompted with the main object together with some additional elements on your photo. So for this image, we have the main object, sky, architecture, water, and man-made ground. So depending on what you're doing and what your project is, you may want to select just the main object or some additional item. For us, for this example, we're just gonna go with the main object and click on remove. Once again, it's gonna take a few seconds and then it will remove the background. Now the tool did really good job removing most of the background. However, it also removed part of the balloon here. So to adjust that, we can use the refinements brush. Simply click on the refinement brush. And once you do that, your image will change into the three colors, blue, transparent, and orange. The blue represents the background. The orange represents the object and the transparency is the transition. So for us, we know that this part, which is now transparent, is part of our object. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go into the refinements brush, select the object, adjust the size of our brush, and very simply paint over the area we want to keep with our main object. Once you do that, you will see that the part which was transparent is now part of our object and you can't see through. Additionally, I'm looking at the basket here and I would like the part of the sky to be also removed. So let's zoom in and we can do that by holding command plus and then with our space just move around. Now we're gonna select this part and for this the best use is the transition brush. So we're gonna click on the transition brush and very gently paint over the area of the basket. Once we do that, the refinement brush does a really good job of removing the sky from behind the basket. Once we finish with the refinements brush, just close it and we can continue. After this, we can zoom out and we can replace the background. For this, there is nothing easier than going into layers panel, 
click on the plus sign and let's select the image you can download with the sample files and place it behind. So just select it and then in our layers panel drag and drop it behind our original image. Now adjust the size of the image and we can do that by selecting the image and going into layer properties and clicking on fill. Once that's done, we can go into opacity and increase it to 100%. To adjust the balloons, we can go back to our layers, click on them and now just adjust the position of the balloons. So we're going to make them a little smaller. I think something like this is looking good. Maybe somewhere around here is also looking good. Now looking at it, the source of light is coming from here. So what we can do, we can actually flip the image and then again, adjust the position of the balloons. Once we're happy with it, we just hit enter. And this is a very basic way of how you can use the background removal AI. Once again, we're gonna have a full tutorial available on our YouTube channel. So this is just very quick taste of what you can do with this tool. And now it's time to look at the fourth and final extension. And for that, we're gonna use the fourth sample file. Click on it to select it and then move it into edit module by clicking on the edit on the top of your screen or using E on your keyboard. First come first, let's zoom to the 100% and let's double check how soft it is. Now looking at this area, you can see that it's quite soft. So we just need to keep that in mind. Now we need to turn our attention to our main toolbar. On the top, we have a section called extensions where we have the noiseless AI and we covered that in past. If you want to see the video about it, you should check it out on our YouTube channel. And under it, we now have the super sharp AI. Once again, click on it to open it. And it's really simple. We now have a three options here, low, middle and high. So looking at the image, I don't think it's high. So let's try the middle first. Click on the middle. And as you can see, it start to scan the image and it will apply to super sharp AI. And once it's done, we're going to come back. Now, depending on the size of your image and resolution, this process can maybe take a few seconds or a few minutes. But once it's finished, we're going to continue. Now, once the super sharp AI is finished, you can move around and see the result immediately. You can also double check the before and after very simply going into the top right corner of the tool and seeing the before and after. I think the result is pretty good. Yes, I will need to do some additional adjustments, maybe apply some noise reduction and so on. However, I'm quite happy with the result now. And to finish it off, I want to show you how to use the undo and redo option with brushing in Luminar Neo. So very quickly, let's select this image and move it into edit module. For this example, we're going to make it very simple. We're just going to jump into our main toolbar, select the develop, bring the exposure down, and we're going to just apply some burning. We're going to make certain parts darker. So for this, we're going to go into the masking, select the brush, and now just adjust the size and select the paint. So that way, we're just going to paint the darker parts only to the specific parts of the image. We're going to keep the softness and strength on, and we can just brush now the darker parts wherever we want. So that's a one brush. And let's say that we also gonna paint it here. However, what if we are not happy with what we done here? Well, to undo that, we can just hit Command Z. And if we're not happy, even with the previous step, we can also hit Command Z again. Now, if we made a mistake and we actually wanna bring it back, there is nothing easier than just hold Shift, Command or Control Z which will bring the first brush and again shift command and control Z to bring the second brush. So this is a great news because it's something we've been asking for for quite long. So from the version 1.5.0, you are finally used the undo redo option, at least for the brushing for all the tools in Luminar Neo. And that's all the news for today. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future news or updates. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name was Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.